This is question number three from the 2017 free response, and this is a no calculator question. So if you're using your calculators for one and two, make sure that you have that put away for problem number three. Um, this is what I like to call the geometry question because we're going to be doing a little bit of geometry in order to answer these questions. So as you can see, we have a function whose name is f prime. The function f original is differentiable on the closed interval from negative 6 to 5. We can see that because we're looking at f prime right here and we can see that there is a y value everywhere. Um, the original function f satisfies the condition that when x is negative 2, y is 7 on the original function, which we don't have. We have f prime. The graph of f prime the derivative of f original consists of a semicircle. We can see that right there. There's our semicircle. And three line segments. So there's one line segment, two, three line segments as shown in the graph or the figure above. So for letter A, we need to find the y value of f at negative 6. So remember, we had up here an initial condition. And in that initial condition, when x is negative 2, y is equal to 7. And we're going to start at negative 2, which is right here. And we're going to go back to negative 6. So we're traveling in the opposite direction. So even though this area is above the x-axis, because we changed direction, we're going to count it as a negative. Now, if you take a look at my figure on the right-hand side, which I'll uncover, I've already done the geometry in order to calculate those areas. So for the first region, I'm looking at the area of a triangle, 1 half base times height, so the area of this region is 4. For the semicircle, that would be pi or r squared over 2. I have a radius of 2, um, so the area of the whole semicircle, pi r squared over 2, would be 2 pi, so each region would be an area of pi units because of the symmetry. I did not put signs in front of those. I'm just saying that this is the area of that region. And then in the third um, region, I have another triangle, so I'm going to do 1 half base times height. So that's 1 half of 1, 2, 3 times 2 gives me an area of 3. So those numbers are there whenever I need them. There's my, what well, I call it, the geometry problem. So f of negative 6 will begin with a, an initial condition of 7. We start at an x value of negative 2. That comes from the initial condition. And we're stopping at a y value of negative 6. So I have 7 units of area already accumulated. Remember, we were traveling in the opposite direction. So even though that area is above the x-axis, I'm going to count it as negative. And 7 and negative 4 gives me a net area of 3. For f of 5, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going in the positive direction. So I have 7 units of area. Start at negative 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Accumulate until I get to 5. So there's the 7 units of area. Remember, there were uh, 2 quarter circles, so I have... Um, negative 2 pi, that area was below the x-axis, and I'm moving in the, in the positive direction, plus 3. Um, you can leave your answer just like that if you want to, or you can simplify it to be 10 minus 2 pi. So that's question A. For question B, on what intervals is f original? Whoops, edit undo. I thought I had the pen selected. Sorry about that. So for what interval is f original increasing? This is the all about me sheet. So a function increases when its first derivative is positive. So when I look at the graph above, uh, let me get rid of this off of the graph. The first derivative, this is f prime that they gave us. The first derivative is positive here and here and here. So um, f is increasing from negative 6 to 2 and from 2 to 5 because f prime of x is positive or greater than 0. That's a pretty easy question. 
for letter C. Let's find out what they want us to do there. In letter C, we're finding the absolute minimum, so we're back to the EVT, Extreme Value Theorem. So we're going to need the critical numbers and the endpoints. Critical numbers are where the first derivative is zero or undefined. So let's look back up at the graph. This is F prime. I'm going to get rid of my writing from before. So F prime is zero at negative two. F prime is zero at two. And let me see, what was my interval? I might be including some numbers from negative six to five. So we're going, okay, all the way across. Now, some students may be confused and say, oh, F prime is not defined at three. So three is a critical number. That's not true. F prime is defined when X is three, y is 2. Second derivative is not defined. In other words, f prime, f prime is not differentiable at this sharp turn, but f is differentiable. So we're not including that as a critical number, so we have our endpoint of negative 6. We have critical number of negative 2, critical number of positive 2, and the other endpoint of 5. Now, because we're looking for the absolute minimum, a change from positive to negative, so absolute um, minimum cannot occur at x equal to negative 2 because that's a local maximum. You can't be the absolute minimum if you are a local maximum. Um, I don't remember if I included it in my table of values, but to make this decision, I'm going to create a table of values. I did in this case, and so um, I already knew that I'm using the area model to figure out these uh, y values. Remember in part A, we had already figured out that the y value of negative 6 is 3. Then I need to figure out the y value of negative 2. So remember, we have that initial condition of 7, and then we're moving nowhere from negative 2 to 2, so we get a y value of 7. So, so far... That can't be the absolute minimum because it's greater than the last y value. Then we're going to find the y value of 2. So again, initial condition of 7 from negative 2 to 2. So that would be 7 minus 2 pi. And then I already found the y value at 5 to be 10 minus 2 pi. So notice that both of these are minus 2 pi, minus 2 pi. And so um, then I have to figure out which one is going to be smaller. Well, obviously, 7 minus 2 pi is going to be smaller than 10 minus 2 pi. Then I have to compare that to 3. Well, let's think about the value of pi. Um, pi is about 3.14 multiplied by 2 is about 6.28. So 7 minus 6.28 is going to be a smaller number than 3. So therefore, the absolute minimum occurs at x equal to 2 and is 7 minus 2 pi. And then finally, let's go back. I think there's a part D. So for part D, we are looking for the second derivative value at negative 5 and the second derivative value at 3. Come back up to the original graph. Let me get rid of my markings. So on the graph, negative 5, the point negative 5 is here. And we notice that I am on a line segment, so I'm going to rise and run, or in this case, fall. So I'm going, <coughs> excuse me, down 2 and to the right 4. So I'm going to show my work. I'm going to show my difference quotient down here. So 0 minus 2 over 2 minus negative 6 gives me negative 2 over 4, which is what I said, which is a slope of negative 1 half. The second derivative at 3, now we talked about this a little bit earlier, f prime has no derivative at 3. f prime has a sharp term. Remember, this is the graph of f prime. And because f prime has a sharp turn at 3, the second derivative 
is not defined. Now remember, you have to justify that with calculus. You cannot just say sharp turns. So let's take a look at that at the bottom. So I'm going to say second derivative at 3 does not exist because the derivative from the left, remember there's my difference quotient, change in y over change in x. That's, that's my difference quotient right there. Coming from the left side is equal to 2, which is not the same thing as the limit as x approaches 3 from the right side, which is negative 1. Now you don't necessarily have to declare the 2 and the negative 1. It's a stronger argument. Um, you mainly have to explain that the derivative from the left does not equal the derivative from the right using, whoops, using calculus notation. All right, that's kind of sloppy. Okay. All right, let's look at the scoring rubric and so you can score yourself. So in letter A, you may go back and look at that. In letter A, the student must use the initial condition for one point. Correctly finding f of negative 6 is one point, and correctly finding f of 5 is one point. Simplified or unsimplified for f of negative, or f of 5, you may leave it like that, or you may combine like terms and leave it like that. For part B, we're looking for an answer with justification, so we want to say that um, the original function f is increasing because f prime is greater than zero, and then of course we want to declare the intervals on which f is increasing. You don't need to worry about your opens and closed brackets and endpoints there. Letter C, you have to show the reader, first of all, you have to have a consideration of x equal to 2, because that was where a local minimum occurs. Um, it's a good idea to state that the first derivative is 0 at the two values that we talked about. And then your answer with your justification, you showing this table of values, whoops, that's your justification right there, And but you do need to declare what your answer is. Now, if you said the absolute minimum occurs at x equal to 2 and you have the table, then we will refer and reference right here to see that y value, but they did ask you for the absolute minimum value, so it's better to declare it yourself and make it really clear for the reader. Oops, and we didn't do D. Sorry about that. Let me finish this up. So in letter D, um, one point for finding the slope of f prime or the second derivative at negative 5 to be negative 1 half and one point for declaring that the second derivative at 3 does not exist but you must have the explanation if you don't have the explanation then you don't get the point so um, and that's where that left and right derivatives not equaling each other oh did I have the f prime on the other side that makes me wonder Ooh, I did not. So I would not get that point because it's f prime that we should be considering and looking at in that case. So uh, hopefully you got it right, uh, but I did make a mistake now that I see the scoring rubric, so I'm not going to get that second point. I'll get the first point, but not the second point.